Uh, in the Graphics of the Year video, when discussing Alan Wake 2, Oliver said it's a hard game to pick apart because it looks so good and at a level that I almost have trouble critiquing. And this made me wonder, in X years when affordable hardware can run path-traced games at 60 FPS plus, what will actually be left to critique from a technological perspective other than the performance of the games? Is there a next step after path-tracing that we could look forward to? Uh, to not being able to afford, or are we on the cusp of real-time rendering perfection? I think we're quite a way off from that, right, yeah. Oliver? Yeah, I yeah. think just in the realm of ray tracing, like I think there will still be a lot to critique because ray tracing involves a lot of compromises and simplifications to get it running in real time at all. So getting like a pristine path traced output with minimal noise, a stable image, without over darkening and with practically infinite range and solving all these problems, I think that'll be a very hard problem. Um, I think there will always be almost almost always be certain issues that you can point to and say that's not good enough, even if even if they mm -hmm. might be marginal at some point. You also need to have very high asset quality with a lot of real geometry instead of texturing tricks because ray tracing tends to expose that in games like Cyberpunk in particular, where you know you begin to notice like, oh yeah, that's a normal map, that's not real geometry. Ray tracing uh, really requires uh, a, a lot of real geometry to really look really good and consistent across a range of assets, which you're not always seeing. And then in like in terms of the step after path tracing, uh, my own personal <laughs> uh, thought is to, to to what's what's next in computer graphics or what's like the endpoint of computer graphics. I think it probably looks something like neural rendering, where the game is generating images and that's modified by some kind of generative uh, generative AI imaging model. Um, I think that could lead to some, uh, like, frankly, incredible visual results. Uh, but there are a huge amount of hurdles in terms of getting quality up and getting it running at a good resolution in real time and getting enough temporal consistency and enough consistency through the environment to actually make it work properly. But I, I kind of think that's that would be the next uh, very interesting area <laughs> of graphics rendering that I'm sure we're going to see people explore over the coming coming years. Mm -hmm. Anything to add to that, John? Oh, no, I think you said it pretty uh, well there, Oliver. Yeah, um, I think it's just the case that standards shift, right? You know, mm -hmm. there are some games on Xbox 360 that you just couldn't believe the quality of when you first saw it, but <laughs> they are of an age now. I mean, you know, going back, there was a, a certain period, I think it began in 2007, where you started to see games like Assassin's Creed, which just looked absolutely phenomenal. And, uh, you know, I remember when I saw um, uh, God of War 3 on PS3, you know, that initial Poseidon level, I was thinking, man, if they've got some sort of software emulator for a PS4 in here, this looks like completely beyond anything I've ever seen on this generation of hardware. It's just, you know, I guess it is just the, you know, the, the graphics of the time, the shifting goalposts, things do evolve and get better. But I have to agree with you, Oliver, it really is difficult to... Yeah. Critique Alan Wake's too visual. Yeah, visual. yeah. actually, you know, <laughs> when you say that, maybe something that does come to mind is that it's really important to remember is that a lot of the stuff that you, a lot of the best visuals, it's not just due to the underlying rendering technologies. It's like the pure talent that went into the artistic makeup of creating that game, right? Making sure everything fits together perfectly with that great fit and finish. Uh, that stuff's really hard to do well. And that's something mm -hmm. you see in just like the highest end productions. Uh, and I think, you, you know, that's not just a thing that's going to get better as hardware increases. That's in fact, I'd say that stuff's getting harder to pull off as the fidelity increases. Like once you get to this point where you've got this, these insanely realistic path traced worlds going on, uh, getting animation, facial expressions, all the, all the things that move and, and, and work within the game world to look natural it's going to be even harder to pull off like Uncan uncanny valley is going to be we're going to pay a visit to uncanny valley i would say i actually <laughs> yeah. think robocop which i love by the way is a really interesting example because it has some of like the most realistic lighting i've seen uh awesome use of uh <laughs> of lumen right but then you get some of these cutscenes, yeah. and like the the, the <laughs> yes. budgetary issues shine through they're, they're very stiff they don't you know there are I would say, quite frankly, like the character models in something like Silent Hill 3 on PS2 still look and move better than anything in RoboCop, <laughs> right? And, that's wow. a, and that just shows the difference in artistry there. Uh, there. There are team did an awesome job in the environments. It's just, man, those characters, woof. <laughs>